my creatives and welcome to another video and today I'm back with the final part for this junk journal ephemera snail mail mm, uh, series I don't know should I call it the series would you like me to make a uh, separate play playlist for this just just let me know um, yeah so the final part I am going to create the envelopes to send them out uh, these will be super simple envelopes to create and they will be big ones so I will show you a trick how you can create big envelopes with a very very easy tutorial and then uh, these babies are almost ready to send out of course I still need to add the name but I like I said I will do that once I'm ready so grab your stuff or maybe your cup of coffee or tea or anything or craft with me and let's get crafty so um, yeah, here are the pockets completely filled uh, like we did in the uh, last video. So if you want to see that uh, in the description box, I put some links, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I will put these aside because we're going to make one uh, an envelope for this green one. So this is my uh, meal. It has this size and that's pretty big. So I wanted to use uh, this book here. And I thought it would be big enough, but if I put it like this, uh, I cannot fold a envelope from this uh, paper. So what I decided to do was, because this is a sewn book, you can rip the seams. I will show you a little bit on the inside. You can rip the seams, and if you rip the seams, uh, you can take out your piece of paper and then it's this big. And that big, I can create a... Um, envelope for this size so I have picked out a page I took quite a while because I already uh, I already made the other envelopes uh, but I, I took quite a while to figure out uh, which papers I wanted to use but like I said, if you rip the seam this is how they come out and uh, then you have one big sheet and what i wanted to do is i wanted the outside of the envelope to also fit in with the color theme so i tried to find pages that would have well in my case green on both sides well they didn't work out completely of course because well you work with book pages but now this is a really really nice size and i would like to have this on the front if you would have liked what is inside on the front just fold it the other way and then you can fold the way I'm going to show you how to fold this uh, certain envelope. So I am folding this envelope and I'm following a tutorial by Barbara from 49 Dragonflies. She showed us how to create simple uh, coin envelopes with folding and a few cuts. And I have been using that formula ever since for envelopes and snail mail envelopes. Simply because, well, it's a super easy way and you can make envelopes in all the sizes that you want. So what are we going to do? I always take my thing <laughs> as a reference and I want to fold in on this side first. I am, uh, you can see here, I've picked a very nice page for you to see, but this is the middle of the page. Uh, I'm going to fold it on this side for about a quarter. Uh, so until about here because then I have a decent amount of the green that I wanted to show on the front side on the front and then I also have a decent amount on the back uh, then I will take my bone folder crease it I'm going to open this back up and then I'm going to take this side and I'm going to fold it up almost all the way up to the crease. So not completely, but it's almost all the way up to the crease. If you line it up with the up and top and the bottom of your page, then it's definitely a straight edge. So then I fold this back in and this will be the back side of our envelope. Now what I'm going to do is I take my template and as you can see, it is wide enough uh, to put in my my meal. I like to have a little bit of, you know, also wiggle room. Then I take a little bit of the bottom uh, and I am going to fold that up. I think it is about an inch that I'm folding it up. Uh, also going to score this 
and then turning it around putting my mail here also leaving uh, some space so it, it's not completely snug in there and then I'm going to fold this is about I think one and a half inch the flap um, you can make it as wide or as narrow as you want um, this is just a formula you can just fold whatever this measurements don't really matter um, whatever you like and it depends on the size of your book page of course because my envelope turned out to be oh, let's see seven and a bit by nine and a bit so the next thing is we can put this aside we don't need this anymore <laughs> until we of course fill it next thing we are going to do is do some cuts so you're going to fold it out completely and you are going to take your scissors which are here and you're going to cut so you have made some folds and there are some points where the folds cross that is where you're going to cut so here is a cross point I should make a mark so maybe you can see I don't know I can see it properly but here's a cross point here is one um, here is one and then here is one so what you are going to do is on this bottom one I will show you here's the cross point you're going to snip it in like a triangle to that cross point then you turn it around and you are going to cut on the folding line so on the folding line away this piece then you go to the other side and try not to cut this one because this is just the middle this is not your folding line this is the middle of the book and the first envelope i did i cut away here and then it didn't measure up of course uh, so double check that you have your own folding line and you do the same thing so you also cut a triangle piece until the point where all the lines meet then you're also going to cut away this bottom piece on the folding line and cut 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 yes so that is the bottom so don't cut in this line <laughs> don't cut in this one but the one you made beside them <laughs> then you're going to do the same on the top but of course this this piece is bigger but the principle is the same you're going to cut a triangle shape on the top to the crossing point also cutting this away on the line and then you are going to do it on the other side as well don't cut here cut here <laughs> and then a triangle here and also on the cutting line now barbara tapers them a little bit uh, when she uses these envelopes uh, she also doesn't have a big big one like this um, like I have on this side but uh, she cuts them a little bit with, with an angle and um, then also she removes this part so you have two flaps and that are similar sized uh, I'm not going to do that simply because uh, I don't have to take stuff in and out again um, because I'm going to glue my envelope shut and uh, I tried to do that and then I make a made a horrible mistake uh, with this so I'm, I'm going to leave it like this why this is an envelope that is going in the mail so I would like the extra sturdiness or extra grip I have uh, but you could cut this panel shorter and then taper it in a little bit so you could easily grab it in and out or you know leave it like this and remove a half a circle or something whatever you would like i'm wandering off i'm sorry so this is the actual envelope uh like i said super simple and all the credits go to barbara from 49 dragonflies i love her then uh we are going to glue and we are going to glue on two places no we are not going to glue yet wait <laughs> i almost forgot 
I want to ink the ed edges. This is completely optional, of course. I want to ink my envelope because I already I inked everything in, in the in the mail with walnut stain uh, distress oxide. So I want to ink uh, my edges. So this will be my front. Loving it because it looks so green, right? With the green theme. theme. Yeah, so I'm going to ink all the edges of this envelope uh, so it fits <laughs> with the theme. And then I will be back after I inked up everything and then I will show you how to assemble it and then we will uh, decorate this envelope because of course it's not finished like this, right? It needs a little bit more decorating. So I will see you after I inked up my envelope. Now I have inked up my envelope on all sides, so on the front, on the back. And I also uh, did inking on this flap and a little bit on this part here. So there's a line. So it, it, I don't know, it feels more natural. I don't know. I liked it. So now we are going to assemble our envelope. We're going to glue it. And we are taking this is glue stick, which I don't like, but it's almost done. So I'm so happy. <laughs> but then I have a second one. Um, so we're going to glue um, this flap onto the envelope. So it is stuck. And then we are going to glue the small one because that is the bottom flap. Now in my case, I'm going to send this out as snail mail. So once everything is inside, I would also put glue here and then um, you know, glue it so it doesn't really matter if you do it upside down. Uh, but you would like to have this small flap glued down and this big one open uh, because this is the top. So I'm going to glue this as well. I'm using glue stick. I trust the glue stick um, with transport and everything. So I'm just going for it. And I glue it shut. Then this is the envelope in its entirety. Now, of course, I wanted to decorate and that is why I did some, um, well, thinking beforehand because I found that my decision making, um, <laughs> it takes a little while. Um, also, because I'm still a bit rusty and I don't feel comfortable um, in improvising on the fly yet. Or, well, I do, of course, on my own, but not on camera. So I thought about this. I, I figured out what I wanted to do. I will tell you how I came to the conclusions of things because... First of all, I thought this is a fragile part of my paper. It is where the signature was sewn. There are little holes in there, of course, because of the thread. So I have to cover this. I thought, well, let's cover that with some Tim Holtz washi tape. Um, I, <laughs> I think I took a, took a decent 20 minutes to figure out which washi tape I wanted to use. But I have figured out which one I wanted to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the bottom. And then I'm going to put this on all the way to the top. Uh, the margins of this book were actually pretty amazing to use. Uh, I'm also going to do it on the flap, by the way, not just, not just on the envelope part, but also on the flap part. Uh, to help me put it straight, I like to put my ruler next to my washi and just rip it. And that way I have a straight line and I don't have to do anything with scissors. So that was very nice. I love this. Uh, it also adds a little bit of an extra, you know, decorative element. Uh, but it helps with the seam. Uh, of course, I need to ink the edges again. A little bit. Yes. Um, after that, I was a little bit clueless on what I wanted to do because... Um, these are pretty busy book pages, right? And I want to send them out in the mail. And I know I, in the Netherlands, can just send out envelopes like these. I know there are people who can't, but then you can do an envelope inside an envelope if you would like, of course. Uh, but yeah, so I was thinking, okay, I need to have something to put the address on. 
and I thought of post-its or sticky notes uh, because I got a lot in happy mail from other people and stuff so I thought of that and then I found this pad in my stash and this was sent to me in, in happy mail so I um, I think I spent 30 minutes playing around with one of these sheets and adding it in different ways on my uh, project and figuring out what I wanted to do. Um, do I want to use it as a collage piece or do I want to put on the address? I eventually decided to use it for my address um, and this is what came out. So. I coffee dyed it because of course this is much too wide for what I'm doing and I wrote please send to now there's also a reason I don't do that on camera because I can't talk and write and this also took me quite some time uh, I'm going to add the address here um, in the in, in this box for the recipient now then of course I'm going to glue this as well to my envelope so after this I was pretty happy, I, <laughs> I figured uh, out what I wanted to do with the address because it's, pretty, it's a pretty crucial part of sending mail, right? Uh, I want it to look pretty, uh, but I also want the address to be legible for the machines and I know in the Netherlands they are not very difficult with these things. So uh, I thought, well, this would be fine. Um, and then I just stick this on here and I have a nice address label so once I decide who gets this mail I will add their address in here uh, I also I want to let you know I wrote this uh, first in pencil and then after that I wrote it with the Tombo Fudeno Suke Pen Soft Tip I believe it is uh, is this one um, I like to use these it's not because I'm great at brush handling um, I'm, I'm absolutely not but I like to. Um, I like to use a pen, love the pen. Then, of course, it was still a bit, you know, plain. So I thought of a botanical that I cut out of a book. I have this box over here with uh, botanicals. And uh, this is so not handy because everything sticks into each other. But I don't know how I want to store them otherwise. Uh, but I found this one and I thought this would look pretty with the green. Uh, but then I was still missing something. Uh, so I took out my Tim Holtz butterflies. And um, I am stamping these. I don't know if you enjoy that I already figured everything out. But... <laughs> Uh, let me know. I think this will be a little bit of a quicker, a quicker video. Uh, I also thought of the moths because I also have that stamp set with the moths. Um, but yeah, I I I couldn't find one that I really liked. And um, while I was searching for stamps, because I knew I, I wanted to stamp, I also found another stamp that I totally forgot I had. Uh, because I, first of all, I was thinking about here that maybe I did have a Happy Mail stamp that said, please send to, uh, because that would be less effort. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have that. I also didn't want to stamp it out with alpha stamps because that also takes a while, especially if you have to do it four times. But I also didn't feel like writing. <laughs> so I eventually chose for writing in my, um, well, fancied up a little bit handwriting um, because that would be quicker. <laughs> but I found another stamp, which I'm going to show you later on. I thought it was super cute and wanted to add it. So now I'm going to stick this plant here and I really like that as a decoration. So it's not too much, but because you have already a beautiful book page, um, yeah, it looks very, I don't know, decorated. So I love the butterflies and uh, yeah, I'm going to stick down this plant. So I um, 
ordered some more Tim Holtz stamps. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I think they will be here on Thursday, my Thursday. Um, when you just see this video, I already have these stamps. Um, and I probably already used them. But uh, looking forward to those. Uh, I also bought some pouches to put them in. I hope I will enjoy it because the stamps from Tim Holtz, uh, they fell, fall out of the the bags and I have with uh, this one, I will show you, that they are letting loose and stuff and I drop them so I would like to have some pouches so I don't lose any. Okay, concentrate. Plants. Plants. Yes. So I'm lining it up with the washi tape. I chose for all the envelopes ones that are very long uh, and more narrow uh, because I thought, well I know I have cut out a lot of these out, out of these certain books uh, that look like that and uh, I thought that would be cool. So now I was uh, done with my uh, with my first one um, and uh, I totally forgot that I also have to add my return address. So I uh, coffee dyed uh, a piece of this and add return address. So I just tore off this bottom piece uh, and then I coffee dyed that, dried it with my heat gun and uh, put on return address and I will write my own address in here of course. And. I'm going to stick that on the back because I always want to add my return address uh, just in case uh, I had a mail a couple of months ago that I sent out and the first time it said it got back to me saying that the address was incorrect or didn't exist and I thought well that's not right so I sent it out again and then it finally arrived at Juvi so that made me very happy. Uh, I know in the Netherlands, if I'm going to send this out abroad, uh, I have to add this form, which is about this big. Um, so, and I know you're supposed to do that on the front of your envelope, but I never do. I always put them on the back. So I will add the form here. And then I figured out, I found my little snail stamp. So I was super, super excited. <laughs> I thought it would be perfect, right? Because I'm sending snail mail. So I thought if I would stamp this little fellow on the back here, then there would be a little snail stamp. I love it. He is so cool. He is from Carabella Studio. I love him. Then that is my envelope. Uh, I will share with you the other ones so here they are it took me uh, i don't know i'm very tired today so creating these envelopes it took me a lot longer than supposed to but i had fun i enjoyed myself and then i thought should i film it yeah i'm going to film it um and just share with you how i created them so i'm actually really in love with them uh, these are all of them uh, so this one is for the red um red nail so i will grab that um yes the red nail will go in here i think it looks really cool together um, with the book page so i'll just add it so i don't lose anything anymore fits in perfectly and once i'm sending it out i will put glue stick here and just glue it shut and then it will go into the mail like this and of course I will add, po add my postage stamps here then this is for the yellow one which I also very much like uh, my yellow envelope and then there's a little snail <laughs> so this one will go in here uh, it was pretty hard to find something yellow because most of the flowers in this book were orange um, also really love this book. I would definitely buy it again. I don't usually like these photographed images, but because they, these ones look so vintage, um, I like them. So that is why I bought this book. And there's also small li little illustrations in this book. Uh, so I really like it. Uh, this is the purple one, which I also really enjoyed. So I made a purple one, which I screwed up. Uh, 
so I'm going to add this into my own my own journal uh, or whatever so this will go with this one which I also think looks really cool so I'll add this in here and then of course the one I made together with you, the green one, and uh, this one will go in there. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I loved working on this project, uh, making this nail. And uh, now the only thing left for me to do is to find out who <laughs> will get one of these. Then I will uh, write the letters. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I need to send them out. So I, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Like I said, it's a very big envelope. You can use it, put it in your junk journal uh, or use it like I'm doing. Uh, and I hope you got some inspiration to use your book pages or maybe some bigger book pages. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Bye.